Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of the multiplayer RTS series. Today we will continue where we left off from part 2. In this episode I will make sure that we can at least select our unit and give it an idle and running animation. If you want to follow along with the series and have not started yet, check out the card that displays at the top right now to check out the playlist. When selecting a unit you will normally see a circle or some kind of selection around the unit. So firstly we would like to create a circle selection. Open up the application GIMP2. If you do not have GIMP2 installed, make sure to click the link down below or just Google GIMP and download the latest version and install. When GIMP is open, select File, New, Image Size with Width of 1920 and Height of 1080 and click OK. Select layer at the top and scroll over transparency and add alpha channel. If yours is grayed out, then that means it is already added. Click the fuzzy tool and on the image and press delete on your keyboard. Click on the ellipse tool and scroll over the image space and if you are zoomed in like I am, press control and scroll backwards to zoom out a bit and then click on an empty space. Go to the top left and click and then hold down shift and make a fixed circle. Get as close as possible to the height of the image space, drag and adjust the edges to get it as close as possible to the borders and remember when dragging the edges, Make sure to select one of the edges and then press shift after clicking to make sure that you are scaling by fixed. Once the circle outline is ready, click on the secondary color by the colors and change the color to white. Press control and period and it will fill in the selection with your secondary color. Now click on one of the edges of the circle and press control and shift and drag one of the sides of the circle to move the selection inwards. When happy with a location, then press the delete key on your keyboard and click on the outside of the selection. Now click on image and crop to content. Click file, export as, then go to your projects folder, assets, create a new folder called sprites and then save it as the selection.png. Go back into Unity and click on the sprites folder and click on selection, change texture type to sprite 2D and UI and apply your changes. Open up the unit prefab and create a new empty game object and rename it to selection and reset the transform only if the position is funky like mine. Add the sprite renderer component and drag and drop the selection texture into sprite. Change the rotation on the x axis to 90 and scale the game object to 0.18 if you followed along. If you are using your own texture then adjust as you see fit. The selection game object should be disabled by default. Now we want to create an event system to register when we select and deselect the unit. Go to the scripts folder and I just want to quickly create a new folder called buildings and put a unit spawner inside of it and then go into units folder and create a new script called unit. Open up the script and change mono behavior to network behavior and press control and period and select using mirror. We can remove the start and update method and create the server region and client region. Now we want to add the event so that the first event will be serialized field private unity event on selected equal null. And then click on unity event and press control and period to select using unity engine dot events. Now that we have a selected event, now we want a deselect event. So we will type in serialize field private unity event on deselect equal null. Once we have the events ready, we would like to create methods for the events for selecting and deselecting. And this code happens only for the client side as the server is not doing the selecting or deselecting. So inside of the client region, we will create a public void select method and type in square brackets client above the method. When we go back into Unity, then we will set the game object for the selection active and not active with the events. But this is to check that we own the unit we are selecting and if we can invoke the event. Inside the method, we will write if it doesn't have authority, then return. Just to check if we do own the unit we are trying to select. If we do own the unit, then we want to write on selected question mark 
dot invoke and the question mark after on selected is the same as return when it receives a null value. If the unity event on selected brings forth no data, then it won't run the invoke. But if we did pass in a value like we will do in a minute, then it can invoke the event. Copy and paste the select method and rename select to deselect and on selected to on deselected. This will do the exact same as select as it will check first if we do in fact own the unit and if there is an event to invoke. Head back into Unity, make sure you are inside of the unit prefab and drag the unit script into the unit prefab. You will now see on selected event and on deselected event. Click the plus icon by on selected event and drag and drop the selection game object into the event and make sure that the game object is set active to true to make the selection appear. Click on the plus icon by the on deselected event and drag and drop the selection game object inside the deselected event and make sure that the game object set active is false to make the selection disappear. Now we want to create a new script called unit selection for actually clicking on the units to register the data or selecting multiple units, which we will do in a future episode as that will require a lot of code. Open the script and type in private camera and call it main camera. We want to create a unit list where each unit we got selected gets added to the list and each unit we deselect gets taken off the list by saying private list unit selected units equal new list unit in the start method cache the camera by saying main camera equal camera dot main change the start method to private void start and the update method to private void update in the update method we want to know when we have passed the left mouse button and when we have released the mouse button. When we release the mouse button, we want a method to run which will take the ray data to see if you are selecting a unit. We will then type in if mouse and then press control and period just to make sure we are using the input system and dot current dot left button dot was pressed this frame, then else if mouse dot current dot left button dot was released this frame every time you press the left button then you will clear the previous selection you had and if there was a unit then the released frame will add the units to a new list so we will create a new method to be called when the button is released underneath the update method we will create private void selection area just make sure to add selection area in the update method when the left button was released as frame and back in the selection area then check for the ray of ray which equals main camera dot screen point to ray mouse dot current dot position dot read value which will give the vector two of read value after we have tried giving the ray a value we need to see if there is actually a value attached. So this we will write if there isn't physics dot ray cost ray and the out ray cost hit and call it hit and make the distance be math f dot infinity and then we need to check a layer mask for the ray to hit. So let us go to the top of the script and create a serialized field private layer mask and call it layer mask equal new layer mask. At this current moment everything in our scene is default. So we will set this layer mask in the inspector to be the same as the rest until we polish this up a bit more with only checking for certain layers and not the general layer. After math f dot infinity we will then say layer mask and if nothing has been hit by the ray then we return now that we know that we hit something now we would like to know if the object we are hitting is a unit and we want to know also if it is our unit so for this we will write if it isn't hit dot collider dot try get component unit out unit unit then return on our unit prefab we have the unit script attached so if we hit a collider with that component on then it will continue to check if we own this unit by saying if it isn't unit dot has authority then return if we also own the unit we have selected then we add the unit to the list we created by saying selected units dot add and pass in unit and now that the unit is in the list at the same time we want to go through the list and run the event select method we created earlier 
to make sure that this single unit is selected. But also in future, when we do implement the drag selection, then it needs to show the other units as selected as well. Now to go through the list, we will say for each unit, selected unit in selected units, then run selected unit dot select. And now this will invoke the method we have in the unit script. For deselecting, we can copy this for each loop and paste it in the update method when the button is press this frame and change select to deselect. And after deselect, we want to clear the list again right after deselecting and type in selected units dot clear. Save the script and go back into Unity. While still being in the unit prefab, Click on the main parent and create a collider over your unit and make sure it is in the default layer. I am going to use a capsule collider as I am using a humanoid character. Adjust the collider to be over the unit. Then enable is trigger and this collider will search for the unit component to verify that this is a unit. Go out of the prefab and create a new empty game object and call it unit selection manager and drag and drop the unit selection into the object and change layer mask from nothing to default layer. Now that we know that the event will invoke when we select the unit, now we want the unit to have some life and adjust the unit size as the unit size is way too big comparison to the tent. Double click the unit prefab and adjust the parent game object scale to the size you prefer. In this episode, the scale I liked was half of what it was, which is 0.5. I then want to make sure that the nav mesh and collider are still perfectly around the unit for when the unit gets selected. In the assets folder, create a new folder called animation and another folder inside of animation called animation controllers and create an animation controller called unit AC and open it up. Create two new states, rename the first one to idle and the second one to running. Go to parameters and create a new bool called is running. For this episode, I will download a naked character from Cinti to get my animations for my characters. The link to the download is down below. Direct download the full zip and extract the zip inside a folder outside of your project. In my case, I will just extract it all in the downloads folder to get the model. Open up Mixamo and log into your account. If you don't have an account, then create an account if you wish to follow along. Once you are inside of Mixamo, click on upload character, drag and drop Mixamo polygon guy naked.fbx into the box. And if it has failed the first try, then try again until it shows the character for auto rigger and click next. First, let's search for an idle animation. I'll choose the first idle I see and click download with the download settings as default and click download again. Now we can search for a running animation. After we found the running animation, then we can check in place and hit download and download. Drag these two FBX files into your animation folder inside of Unity. Click on idle and in the inspector, go to rig, change animation type to humanoid and hit apply. Click on configure, select head and where it says jaw, Double click on eyebrows transform and hit delete on your keyboard to remove. Click on the left hand and remove the bottom three fingers. By middle proxy, click the circle and select finger underscore 01. Middle intermediate, select finger underscore 02. Middle distal, select finger underscore 03. Click on right hand and remove the bottom three fingers again. Then for middle prox, select finger underscore 011. Middle intermediate, select finger underscore 012. Middle distal, select finger underscore 013. Scroll down and click apply and then done. This makes sure that the Synthi asset animation works perfect. Click on animation and delete take 001 and rename mixamo.com to idle and enable loop time and hit apply when you scroll down. Click on the running animation and in the inspector click on rig, change the animation type to humanoid, hit apply and configure. Head, delete jaw eyebrows, left hand, bottom fingers, add fingers at the middle transforms, right hand, bottom fingers, add fingers at the middle transforms. Hit apply, then done. Go to animation, remove take 001 and rename mixamo.com to running and enable loop time and hit apply.
click on idle in the animator controller and open the idle animation in the animation folder and drag the idle motion into motion slot and then click on running state and open the running animation in the animation folder and drag the running motion into the running state motion slot. Make a transition from the idle state to the running state and make a transition from the running state to the idle state. Click on the idle to running state and untick has exit time and make sure condition is running equal true and click on the transition from running to idle and untick has exit time and the condition where is running is equal to false. Click the unit prefab and click the circle next to the animation controller and add the unit AC or just drag and drop the unit AC into that space. Go into the script unit movement. Once you have the unit movement script open, then we want to create a few more variables. And first we want to create a serialized field private animator called unit animator equal null. We then want to create a sync var of bold called underscore is running and this will sync the variable to all clients. In the server region we want to create a new command method which will be run on the server to show if you are running or not. So we will make a public void command set run bool running and then underscore is running equal running. So where will we get this true and false value first? Underneath the client region move on start authority above the update method just to knead it up a bit and then in the update method we will see if you are running or not with command set run agent.velocity.magnitude is greater than zero. If that is true then it means that this unit is moving and that the animator needs to be set. So after we got the underscore is running value set then we can call unit animator dot set bool and then we pass in the string which is going to be is running and then pass in underscore is running which is the bool which will state if it's true or false. At the bottom of the update method we need to also pass through agent dot set destination hit dot point so that the client knows that they are in fact moving and not just being moved by the server. When you go back into Unity, then click on the unit prefab and drag the unit prefab into the unit animator. Build and run the game and run the game in Unity and click on host and client in the Unity editor and click on client localhost in the build window. If we spawn a unit and right click in an area to move it and then select the unit to see if selection is working, then we see that it is working with the animation of the unit. It idles when it is standing still and runs when it is moving. If we spawn and move on the build window and select our unit and try and select the enemy unit which is the host, then we will see that we don't have authority to do that and it will just do nothing and deselect our unit. If we look at both windows then we can see that the animation is syncing across. I updated my Patreon page and rewards. It takes a lot of hours scripting, researching, creating, editing and finalizing a video for YouTube. If you want to support these videos make sure to check out the Patreon page. Thanks for watching and if you haven't already make sure to like and comment and subscribe down below if you like the content I am creating. Join the Discord channel if you want to learn more with game development and if you would just like to join the community or ask for any advice. Check out all the links down below for all of the information. Source code link is also down below for this episode. Keep well and see you in the next episode. Cheers.